Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm starting a new segment called Fix It Yourself and featured today is the Joy-Con because a big problem with the Nintendo Switch and the Joy-Cons is Joy-Con drift. It's something that is incredibly annoying and a lot of people end up buying new Joy-Cons which is unacceptable and I'm going to show you today how you can easily and inexpensively fix your Joy-Con drift. But before we get started, if this video helps you at all, if you enjoyed it, uh, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button, comment, let me know if you're dealing with the same issue, if you were able to fix your Joy-Con with this. I'm going to leave a link in the description below of the equipment I bought to make this fix happen. Everything from the tool set to the replacement joysticks themselves. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Now to start, we only need three tools to complete this job. From the tool set I've included in the link below, you will need the smallest Phillips screwdriver, the needle nose tweezers, and the trusty tri-wing screwdriver that Nintendo has been using for years to keep us out of their systems. <laughs> it's always a must to have a container to put your screws in because they're tiny and they can get lost very easily. I'm using a cookie lid because I love Danish cookies and it gives a nice area to spread out the different screws into groups. First tool up to bat is the tri-wing. Remove all four screws from the back of the Joy-Con and place them together as they are all the same size and order isn't important. Take your time separating the Joy-Con as the little black button that ejects the Joy-Cons from the switch can be lost fairly easily. Once removed, carefully lift the rail that connects to the switch and just let it hang. Same thing with the battery. Now you can place your Joy-Con on a paper towel, take the mini screwdriver and remove all five screws that hold the panel and the LZ button in place. Place the screws in the same pattern that you took them out as they are all different sizes. Be careful because there is a ribbon that you have to disconnect from the board. Again, be wary as there aren't any screws holding the board to the shell of the Joy-Con. The little box that each ribbon attaches to has a little tab that you must flip up to release, easily unlocked with the tip of your tweezers. Then grip the ribbon and pull away gently. Before removing the screws for the joystick, first release the ribbon blocking the top left screw. Then release the ribbon connecting the Joy-Con. Unlike the other tabs for the ribbons, this one is black. Remove the two screws and take your time with easing the joystick out as there is a rubber gasket in front of it. Take your time replacing the joystick and gently pop it through. You may have to wiggle it a little bit, then screw into place. This is where things get a bit more tricky because putting the ribbons back into place is a lot more involved than taking them out. But this joystick ribbon is definitely the hardest of the bunch. Just take your time, find an angle that works for you, and if you get frustrated, take a little break as it's not going anywhere. This ribbon doesn't have any way to truly know if it's in all the way because it doesn't have a telltale like the other ribbons do. But at the end of the ribbon is a clear defined section so you can use that visually to take note. Now with the hardest part out of the way, you can reattach the ribbon that was obstructing the screw from the joystick. Next, angling the tray to insert the ribbon for the LZ button. Make sure the metal contacts are facing down when inserting these ribbons and that all tabs are snapped back down. If the L button came out of place, just line up the spring in the tray at the very top and the rest should be self-explanatory. Now place the LZ panel back into place and screw it back in remembering the pattern in which the screws were laid out. What's great about this screwdriver, at least from the set that I have, is it's magnetized, so it makes it a very easy process to pick up screws and put in place. Put the battery back into place, slide the rail back into place, which has a guide at the top by the L button, flip it over holding the battery, and place on top of the backing. Squeeze gently until you feel each edge snap into place. Now the home stretch. Break out the tri-wing for the last time and screw everything back into place. 
And there you have it. You have fixed your Joy-Con. Give yourself a pat on the back. Now to test out the fruits of our labor. As you can see here, Smash Brothers is working well. And whilst this isn't my finest gameplay because it's a little awkward playing in front of a camera like that, it was still registering movements perfectly. I really hope that you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope it helped you if you are having Joy-Con drift issues. I know there's a lot of new users in the Nintendo Switch family that are going to come across this issue very quickly. And I hope that this might help you guys in the future. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.